Hello friends, Pastor Jesse here at Pequot Evangelical Church, where we exist to help you know and follow Jesus. One of the ways that we do that is through these daily read-throughs of scripture to help you, to help us learn how to read the Bible together for ourselves. That is the best way. We know this is the best way that we can grow to be like Jesus, to know him and to follow him, because Jesus himself says this in John chapter 15, that if we store his word, if we store his word away in our heart, then we will bear his fruit. We will bear Jesus-like fruit in our lives. In other words, our lives will begin to look more and more like him. So we encourage you and equip you to be in God's word. And we read a chapter of scripture today, uh, together a day. Right now we're in Acts chapter 22. Uh, Paul has just been arrested in Acts chapter 21. He's now in Acts chapter 22, given the opportunity to speak to this ra raucous riot of people in front of him. And here in Acts chapter 22, verse one, and through the chapter, we will hear Paul present the gospel to this people that he's been put in front of, even as he is in chains for the gospel. Paul begins by saying, brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I now make before you. When they heard that he was addressing them in he the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And Paul said to them this, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Sicilia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of our law of our fathers, being zealous for God as you are all to this day. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to the person, to prison, both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear witness. From them, I received letters to brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those also who were there and to bring them in bounds to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone all around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said, rise and go to Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to every one of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance. And saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in the one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away and to the Gentiles. Up to this world they listened to him. Up to this word they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with this fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went off to the tribune and said to them, What are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I brought this citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, But I am a citizen by birth. So those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was terrified, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had had him bound. Now, that there's actually, uh, what, two more chapter, two more verses, one more verse, left in chapter 22, but it picks up a, the new thought in Acts chapter 22, verse 30. So I'm going to stop there. And really what we have here is a summary of the entire book of Acts this far, the entire expansion of the church, the mission and ministry of the Holy Spirit through the church uh, thus far. Paul goes through and tells us how Jesus Christ was, in fact, the Christ, the the God-man who came to die on all, in our flesh for our sins on the cross and how Paul himself became a believer, a follower in Jesus Christ, how he went from persecuting the church and being raucous as this crowd is against him for the, the way and the ways of the Jewish law to actually being a proclaimer, not of just the Jewish law, but of Jesus Christ. 
crucified and risen again. And here we see, again, just the summary of how the Holy Spirit works and how it can take the most hard hearts, the hard heart of Paul, who was literally standing by and leading the way as, as believers like Stephen were being persecuted to the, the, the Spirit of God, God himself, in Paul's case, Jesus Christ himself, literally came upon him and Paul was converted to see that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And so there is no, the lesson here is, is clearly that there is no heart too hard to be saved. There is no sin too great, no sinner too unclean to be made clean by the Lord Jesus Christ. Even one that has persecuted the Lord Jesus Christ and his church itself. They can be, like Paul, made clean and their life completely flipped on its head and used for the good and glory of the kingdom of God. I thank you for joining us. Uh, next time we'll jump in and continue in Acts chapter 23. Only five more chapters left until we see the conclusion of this beautiful book that is the unfolding of the church of Jesus Christ.